Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. This is part two of the RCA, uh, 63 RCA KCS 147. And I had a chance to go out to my storage bin and look through my various tubes and stuff. And so we got a bunch of pulls and things that I wanted to compare with the other tubes uh, to see if it's the tester that is messed up or it's this that's the, uh, the tube that's messed up. So I found all but like four of the tubes that I needed and I have some duplicates of some because they are used and I don't know what their true condition is, but we're going to find out here real quick and just start testing them one by one and see what the outcome is. So probably the one that was the most dramatic was the horizontal output, which I think barely registered above zero. And since we had no horizontal drive, it kind of made me wonder... Um, so we've got this Sylvania that I've gotten from a pull from another chassis and I'm just going to see if it's any good and, or if it tests similar. And as we can see, there's like a dramatic difference there between these used one and the other used one. And the other used one I think registered like on that line just above zero there. So if there's a question of it's the tester or the tubes, I'm thinking it really was the tubes because I used this the other day on another set of tubes and compared them all. And they all tested, I mean, testing brand new ones like some brand new EL84s and stuff, they register as they should. So I don't think it's the tester. But let's move on to one of these other things. So here's a used 6EM7 vertical output. Let's see what this one looks like. And let's see, EM7, that should be, yeah, about 57. Okay. And this one tests about the same as the other one does because it's a pole, and I don't expect it to be stellar. Let's check the other section. This would be EFC, I think. C A B. And then that's going to be all the way up. Oh, yeah, we got to change that one. Yeah, so. It checks just a hair higher than the original one, so I'm not going to warrant this one. This one was definitely a pull, and it's dirty and old. Okay, let's look at another one here. So here's a used 6CG7, which is the uh, oscillator, a horizontal oscillator. I don't think this one's lighting. This socket I may have to replace soon. Oh, it's kind of finicky. Of course, being that it's a used tube, the pins could be a little crusty. Yeah, I'm going to clean that one. We'll try that one again. All right, so with the pins cleaned up, now it lights. We can see big difference between that, even the used one that I put in. So, yeah, I don't think it's the tester, guys. I think the the tubes are just tired. So, there's still a couple more that I'm waiting on. And when they all get here, we're going to pop them in the set and see if it uh, behaves a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, I don't think the tester's at fault. I think the tester's good. We just literally had a bunch of bad tubes. All right, so fast forward a bit. The tubes I uh, needed to get came here. Uh, they're all installed in the set now. I dusted some things off. So now we're going to fire it up, and uh, we're going to see if, in fact, uh, it will run now that we have a horizontal output that isn't dead. And uh, the signal path has more or less been repopulated. The only tubes that I did not replace that were still original. I left the audio tube in there because although it's a little tired, it should still work fine. The 
damper, which tested fine. The high voltage rectifier, which tested fine. But uh, all the rest of these uh, I've replaced. And the horizontal output was from a, a chassis pole, which tested okay. And as was the vertical output, which the original one was tired. So I just wanted to get all those in there. But uh, now it's going to be the big moment because we're going to see if this actually gives us a raster or if we've still got other issues afoot. All right, so here it is. Forgive the shakes here. I'm having to hold the camera because my bench is occupied with something else right now. Let's see if it does its thing. Anybody? I got vertical. I hear vertical. Up. Oh. All right. So as you can see, we still have some craptastic horizontal sweep issues. Adjusting the uh, horizontal hole just causes. Yeah, we lost our drive there. Didn't like that. Got vertical though. There's something about this. That horizontal frequency is like really sensitive. And we still got no tuner action either. But we have brightness. Got a little bit of blooming too. And we keep getting a signal breakup. I'm going to mess with the oscillator tube here. But that obviously does not change anything. So although the horizontal out was weak, that didn't fix our pattern here. We still got other stuff going on here. We definitely have some drive issues. Could be bad capacitors, could be an open coil. Because there's definitely some sensitivity going on here. Very sensitive to that uh, horizontal hold frequency change. But that's where we're at. That's retubing it essentially. And I still don't have a tuner yet. No static snow or nothing. But we do have vertical. But lack of width. So we definitely got some drive issues going on. And since we can't really feed a signal through it, since there's no snow, there's no wheel ready to hook a center signal generator up to it and see if it's just a, uh, an issue with uh, drive processing or whatever, though we are getting some ripple there. So maybe it's time to look at the power supply. This one's going to be a tricky one. And I'm not really sure what we're going to run into. Because again, this one's been sitting outside for a long time. We got vertical. We got crummy horizontal. Nobody red plating. A little bit low on the drive. Let's wiggle some IF tubes in here. Oh, there we go. Dirty socket. It's 
So we got massive foldover issues. All right. So this really is going to require that I pull the chassis out. Cool to watch this though. It's just this weird little foldover thing. But yeah, chassis's got to get yanked. But uh, progress. So this is the set backed out for service. Uh, easy to get it out. It's just basically two screws on the top that hold it uh, to the chassis and two screws on the bottom accessible from the bottom. And then it swings out like this, which is nice if you just got to do component replacement. But uh, on the opposite side of that, it's a problem because you have to make an extension cord to run the CRT and the yoke because obviously the distance of those two uh, makes it so that you can't just run it. So looking over here, we definitely have some heating around the oscillator. Uh, solder on the board is okay. It's not compromised yet. So, and the fact that it was not vibration sensitive suggests to me that it's probably not a uh, issue with a loose connection. And then as far as what's in the oscillator circuit, you've got your phase detector diode over here. You've got your frequency coil here, top and bottom. It's a dual, dual core. You've got one in the top here and then if we peer now you can't access it from behind so i guess you gotta have to have a non-fluted one that allows you to get into both sections there and there are some capacitors so basically in this area here that's causing all the heat it is this big three watt resistor and then you've got these guys so i need to check these for drift it looks like they use a a voltage control oscillator type setup where the horizontal hold control is a potentiometer. Now you saw me turning this thing a lot, which is weird, which makes me believe that this control may be defective because it has no stops. You can just continuously rotate it. And we definitely saw our, uh, our frequency dropping out, which is not good. So let me get in the, let me get my meter on this thing and I want to ohm it out as I turn it and see what kind of uh, readings we're getting. Because if we're not getting proper voltage to the oscillator, that could be the reason why we're getting the horrific foldover and stuff. So we need to check that. Okay, so hooking this pot up, I've got one spot where I get 540 ohms. One tiny little spot. And then as you can see, it just goes open. Just, I can keep rotating it until you get to that one spot. I'll go back. There we go. So now it's, now it's 300. Now it's whatever. Okay, so that's, now we're at 700 and something. So obviously, we need to get some uh, control cleaner in there. So out with the CRC. And uh, I'm going to use two hands for this, so just uh, bear with me. Let me rotate the nozzle so it's in the position I want. Or I could spritz it and then quickly start moving it because this evaporates really fast. And we'll just rotate it. The stop is gone, which is uh, concerning. But as long as the element itself is still functional, it really doesn't matter. All right, let's look down here. Yeah, we still got, oh, we got this little spot here. Yeah, so I'm thinking this, this horizontal hold control is trash. We got this one little spot where it works, which is why we were getting a raster, and the rest of the time it's not providing enough voltage to the uh, 6FQ7 to get it to run. Because my assumption is, is that this thing is, like these other ones here, they have a, 
Well, that's just a part number. Not sure what the, uh, let's see if we can get a measurement on the element. Yeah, just an RCA number. I may have to look up the SAMs on this one. So right now, it doesn't measure, doesn't have an element to measure. Let's make sure I got this in the right spot here. This pot just could be plain old garbage. As it says there, the element's open. So no element means no worky. So we may not have enough voltage to the plate of the oscillator tube to start it, and that's why we don't have any drive. So I need to look up the uh, schematic on this and see what this control is supposed to be. And then it's got the lovely tabs in the tiny little shaft. So that's going to be fun trying to make that work with the weird knobs that come with this. Let's see here. So let's, uh, just for grins and giggles. Excuse me here. Let's go to our brightness control. So right now it's 95K. And see, this still works. See, as I rotate it counterclockwise, it goes down. It bottoms out at 50 ohms. And if we turn it all the way up, it's 100K. So, man, that's just crusty. And I'm kind of afraid to clean it now because it's like, am I going to kill it by cleaning it? So I may just deal with that. And then let's check the other one here for the vertical. I kind of know it works. And I guess they're just taking this and then going to ground with the other side. And so if I adjust the uh, vertical. Let's make sure I got this hooked up right because it's hard to see up in here. Yeah, they got this side at ground. Wow, all that's at ground, huh? The two terminals are at ground, and then that one just floats there. It does vary a little. So let's uh, spray some cleaner on that one. Can't get too much worse than what it is now. Okay, so we get down to 26, and we go up to about a meg. Must be in the cathode circuit or something, the vertical oscillator. Okay, well that works. And then let's check our contrast. So for sure our horizontal hold control is garbage. And let's see, they actually use both sections of the wiper here, and it's got a tap on it. That's weird. That's like really touchy. Okay, let's clean this. No, you guys are just loving this disgusting camera work. But uh, no, no mount or tripod today. Okay, well that's working better. 50 ohms on the low side, 12k on the high. But, no matter how we look at it, this uh, vertical, or excuse me, this horizontal hold control here, which is basically the control for the plate on the oscillator tube, you get this one little spot where the wiper, come on, yeah, it's not even working that well. And if I measure across the element, it says the element's not there. 
the resistor element's just not there. It's got a crack in it or something's busted. So I need to find out what this is. Need to make it uh, work with the knobs that we have. And then once we get the oscillator to run right, maybe we'll get a picture then. So that's going to be the next episode. But uh, for now, this is where we stop. So hope you all enjoyed watching this. More stuff to come.